So let's build a real-time application using Redis Enterprise. So as a prerequisite, you have to spin up or create a Redis Enterprise database or cluster before actually creating a real-time application, right? So uh, let's delve into what exactly this application is all about and what it does. So this application leverages multiple modules of uh, Redis Enterprise like Redis JSON and Redis Search. So we are using Redis JSON as a data model. So we will be storing all the application uh, related models inside our as a JSON data structure inside our Redis Enterprise. So for that, we are leveraging Redis JSON. Redis Search would be used uh, to provide a full text uh, indexing capability, a kind of secondary indexing cap capability on top of those JSON models. So, uh, and Redis streams as an asynchronous processing and decoupling engine, right? So uh, this application is actually kind of a dummy application, kind of a sample application wherein uh, we can schedule an appointment with the doctor, right? Uh, let's say you want to go, you want to just uh, have a regular checkup with some of your doctor, you just need to create an appointment. So technically what happens when you create an appointment, a request goes to the Redis streams inside one of the topics. And there would be a few asynchronous processors or applications that would be listening on to those requests. Those requests, those processor would fetch all, fetch those requests from the streams and process this, process each of the individual appointments. Maybe uh, they, they are doing multiple things over here. They are actually approving the appointments or rejecting the appointments or processing or adding the appointment IDs and few other meta informations like uh, created date, modified time and all those things. All these things has be, is being done by the asynchronous processors. Right. So, a quick look into this application. What exactly? Uh, what, the, what exactly is the technology stack over here? Uh, I'm using Red Spring Boot, um, Maven as a build tool, Redis as, as uh, Redis Enterprise as an underlying database, and uh, there are a few things which which needs to be noted down here is that we are also using Redis as an external session store, which means uh, uh, I have externalized all this session related information to the backend store for which we are using Redis Enterprise. Which means if one of the, just think of it in, uh, in a microservices driven ecosystem where we have multiple instances of a particular application. And if one of the application uh, goes down and uh, and user was, is it still in the um, active session, then user doesn't have to log in once again because our entire session attributes and session state is being stored inside the Redis enterprise. Right? We are not leveraging browser here uh, for that matter or HTTP session for here for that matter. Right? Then, it, uh, as I said, it uses Redis streams as asynchronous processing engine uh, for either rejecting or approving the appointments. It is leveraging Red, Redis JSON 2.0 and Redis Search 2.2 for storing appointment model objects and indexing and searching capabilities. So let's move further. And this is the repository, uh, which I would be leveraging here. And all the details are actually inside this appointment directory, GitHub repository. Uh, what exactly is this application all about? It contains all the source code. How to execute, how to run this application. There are multiple ways of it. Like for example, you can utilize any typical IDE like SDS or IntelliJ for that matter. Or you can, if you are very much comfortable with Kubernetes, it contains all the deployment files for that, deployment services and config map files for that, YAML files for that purpose. Then if you are very much comfortable with Docker, you can execute it using Docker. I would be leveraging Docker here to execute and to show this demo. Last but not the least, you can also execute it using Docker Compose. So you don't have to do anything else, all the, I mean, it utilizes, it will spin up, up one container for application and another container for Redis, Redis stack. So I'm using Redis stack for that matter because, uh, and we'll be choosing a Redis search and Redis uh, JSON as a module. So let's get started. So let me, so 
I have already noted down all the commands which I would be using here. So make sure your Docker engine is running. So this is the Docker command which I would be leveraging wherein I, I am providing the that is host, that is port, password, and few auth related information. And finally, the image of it, Docker image. Let's execute it. Oops. have to provide the environment variable here as well. Hit on enter. Let's see what happens. So it says that application has started running, application has been executed, and I will show you. Uh, so before doing that, you have to execute this uh, ready search scripts over here because these scripts are actually needed to execute this application. Why? Because ready search uses indexes, pre-built indexes. So these are the index scripts that you need to you, you need to run before actually executing your application. So once you have done that, uh, let's actually hit it. Username would be Abhishek, password would be 1234. And there you go. Here, the multiple informations which are being shown over here, uh, as you can see, it is a, uh, it says the list of all the appointments. Right now, it is it doesn't have any, so you can schedule one appointment with the doctor. And this chart is all it shows uh, the different number of appointments over time. Right. So let's actually create an appointment first. Let's say John Brown. I am the Let's say it's a regular checkup. Mm -hmm. Nothing fancy about it. Any phone number, let's say, and I'm scheduling this appointment for, let's say, for September 29th. And let's submit the request. Cool. As you can see, some, the request has been submitted, but still it's, it has not been approved. So there would be a separate processor that would be running, which actually does that. Either it is it will be su submitting, it will be approving the request or rejecting the request. Let's refresh that. Cool, as you can see, the request has been, the appointment request has been confirmed and it has also populated the created and updated date with appointment IDs, right? And this, uh, why it is not showing the appointments over time, but because it shows the appointment for the next seven days. So I have scheduled the appointment for uh, September 20th, 29th. So uh, it won't show here. Anyway, if you schedule an appointment for, let's say I'm recording this session, uh, let's uh, schedule this appointment for August 25th. Just any, any reason, X, Y, Z, uh, I check it. Same, submit the request. Here you can see, I can see that appointment because it is well within the next seven days, right? And the next part is the My Profile section. Right now, there is no profile against my name. Let's create one profile. Let's say uh, MG Street, address Bangalore, oops. Contact number, let's put some contact number. Age 35, just hit on save. So we have created a one profile against my name and that profile has been, and we are leveraging Redis hash for that purpose. Let's click on my profile. Yeah, cool. As you can see, my profile has already been created. And you click on the schedule appointments, it will show all the schedule appointments which, are, which we have actually created so far. Let's see how it is being stored inside our uh, Redis database. For that purpose, I would be using Redis Insight, which is a very wonderful tool, and uh, it contains, it provides lots of flexibility, lots of capability. I will show you here. 
So this is the Redis interface AWS database which I have, I have created. Let's uh, refresh it. Yes, cool. So there are multiple things which is going on here. As you can see, these are the keys and these are the uh, folders, uh, different uh, namespaces of these keys, right? For example, user, it contains the user information, my profile, which I, which I have just created. Like for example, if you just click on this hash, it provides all the fee, uh, key and value attributes like age is 35, username is shape, and all those things. Then if you click on the appointment inside appointment, then we have Abhishek because I'm my username was Abhishek. Then inside, if you just click on the keys, it provides all the appointment model objects which, which I have created. As you can see, I, I had created two appointments here. You can see two model objects as a JSON model. So this is a JSON model for the respective appointments which we have. The status confirmed. The status confirmed for both of these two appointments. It contains all the values as well. Next, this is the Spring. I'm using Spring for uh, for this demo, which is why. So, so this is Spring and Session namespace provides all the related information regarding the session store. Like for example, it uses we are leveraging Redis as an externalized session store. And for that, it is actually storing all the sessions over here. As you can see, there are keys. This is one of the session. It is the representation of the session which we have created using our Chrome browser. Right. This shows the expire information when it will be expired. This is the expirations, total number of keys, and all those things. Right. Cool. So that's it.